Hi folks, this is Rob, VK3BVW with the Mount Evelyn DX Report. Today we're going to look at uh, installing a DC plug and socket kit into the uh, Kenwood R5000 communications receiver. But before I do, I just want to go back to something that uh, uh, we covered in the last part, part three of this series, uh, where we installed a, a new filter into the uh, into the rig. It was an AM filter, it was a 4 kilohertz filter and uh, somebody asked and so they said well you didn't tell us how it how it sounded after you performed the uh, the installation so I can report that uh, uh, there was certainly very successful in fact the audio was really quite uh, significantly better out of the rig out of the uh, out of the speaker on AM than it was using the old uh, um, uh, stock standard filter that was supplied with the rig and interestingly it also improved the uh, the audio quality of the single sideband signals as well and um, I guess this is because the, the filters are laid out in series as we discussed in that last video and the shape factor of the of the 4 kilohertz filter uh, appears to have some influence on the 2.4 kilohertz SSB filter as well so I was glad I, go, I bought the uh, the four kilohertz uh, filter. The six kilohertz uh, in rad filter would have been perfect for general or uh, shortwave listening. The audio quality would have been very very good for that. Uh, but the four kilohertz filter does give that uh, uh, option of having more chance of knocking out adjacent channel interference, which you find on the shortwave bands. So I'd say that for me, the 4 kilohertz filter was probably a really good choice for this particular uh, uh, receiver. Anyway, you can check out the, uh, the details of the filter installation in part 3 of this particular series. In the first part of this video series, I mentioned about the AC power that uh, goes into the, the inbuilt transformer uh, at the back of the rig. Now, when this transformer's been on for a while it creates quite a bit of heat inside the the, uh, the case and uh, we know that there are two principally two things that affect electronics one of those is heat or at least excessive heat over a period of time and the second one is dust and dirt that gets into the uh, into the electronics and we've found that this unit's had plenty of dust and dirt in it over the years one of the things I really enjoy about my hobby is to be able to go portable and uh, do some um, uh, field D expeditions and so on just using portable power sources such as a 13.8 volt power source. Now Kenwood used to make an optional DC plug-in socket kit uh, for this particular rig uh, but unfortunately it is no longer available, it hasn't been available for a long period of time. So I looked around locally to see if I could get the right sized socket to fit the hole that's in the back of the unit here um, but I uh, had no luck couldn't just get the right size to actually fit it so what do you do when you find you when you can't find something locally you go on eBay and uh, sure enough I found a source in America that uh, was able to uh, have the who had the right size socket that would fit perfectly into the into the back of the the, uh, the rig here, and it even included an inbuilt uh, fuse uh, and a little green light to let you know when the power is on. So uh, that's all worked out really, really well. In fact, the the guy who who uh, supplied all that for us was really, really helpful. So let's get started on this little project. The procedure for installing this DC cabling is really very easy. At one end there is a DC 12 volt cigarette lighter style plug and at the other end a simple DC plug. As I mentioned earlier the cigarette lighter style plug has an inbuilt fuse and that little green light there to let you know that there's power going through the cabling. I may very well change this over and put some Anderson power poles on there to make it easier for the connections later on. And here's the socket with a short length of wire soldered to it and at the other end two uh, connectors that slip over the terminals on the uh, power board. 
on the back of the, the rig you can see the uh, AC main supply socket and then the perspex that's covering over the DC input. Uh, we need to just unscrew that little plate, throw the plate away but keep the screws. With the top cover unscrewed and taken away you can see the power transformer there up at the uh, top left and just below that is the on the power board you see two terminals one is marked white and the other one is red red is positive and white is negative so you thread the wire from the socket through the little hole that you've uh, now exposed in the back uh, the back plate of the of the receiver and then you put the red wire to the red terminal and the black wire will go to the white terminal then simply screw in the socket to the back plate of the receiver and you're done when you're doing this modification if you can find a socket that's shaped just like that it'll fit really snugly into the back and it looks really good when the job's done you put the top cover back on with its eight screws and you're ready to go portable Okay, that's it for this little video. There's more videos to come, so thanks for watching. See you next time.